This week, we want to focus on every American that has had the honor of swearing an oath to the Constitution. This is directed at every man and woman that has served in the military or in public service. Every serviceman took an oath to protect and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. Soldiers that have taken this oath know who the foreign enemies are, and they risk their lives to defend our country, the Constitution. The U.S. Constitution is what sets America apart from the rest of the world. It established a federal government and fundamental laws, guaranteeing certain basic rights for each and every citizen. As a soldier, you are briefed on who the foreign enemies are, but seldom do you know who the domestic enemies of the Constitution are. Those we have to find out for ourselves, and increasingly we are identifying those domestic enemies of the Constitution. They are becoming more and more obvious. There's an interesting aspect to taking the oath. Once you take the oath, there's no time limit. There usually is a time limit connected to the duty of office, but not the Constitution. In other words, you don't raise your right hand and swear to protect and defend the Constitution until your enlistment runs out or your term of office expires. You take the oath to defend the Constitution unconditionally and without reservation forever. You may take the oath as a requirement at the beginning of any term of enlistment or term of office, but there's no end to the oath to the Constitution. So to those who have taken the oath, what are you doing now, today, to defend the Constitution from its enemies? Did you not understand the oath when you took it? Or did you not understand the Constitution? If you do not know the Constitution, you need to study it. If you do not know who the enemies of the Constitution are, then you need to find out who they are. Then get busy and defend the Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. I've taken the oath five times, four in uniform and once to serve in office. I never thought the oath was temporary, even though I took it five times. It was once and forever, no matter what the requirements were to serve in any position. This is something to point out to people who have taken the oath. Once their term of office or enlistment is over, it does not release them from that oath to the Constitution. So what are these men and women doing now to defend the Constitution? Defending the Constitution is a verb. It's an action, not simply a ceremony saying that you're a loyal citizen. It implies that you will actually engage in the defense of our Constitution. You took an oath. Did you mean it? Of course you did. Are you still willing to fulfill it? I hope so. This is an argument to use with anyone who is not getting involved. If we lose our Constitution, therefore our Republic, all will be lost. According to John Adams, once we lose the Constitution, we lose our freedom forever. Tell your friends, whom you are trying to involve, that now is the time to act. Sit down with them and explain the responsibility of every American citizen, and especially their oath if they've taken one. Defending the Constitution is the only way to save our country. Liberty needs you. The battle is bigger than any one of us. How much more evidence do you need in order to come to the aid of your countrymen? Try using these arguments to build up the membership of the society in your area. Liberty is more important than a single person. One person who thought he was more important than the cause of liberty became a household name of infamy, Benedict Arnold. His self-importance resulted in treason. Just as many protect others by reporting a criminal activity when they know about it, the same is true with protecting our nation's liberty. Defending the Constitution when you realize there's a problem is the only way we can remain a free and independent nation for generations to come. Get people involved using these arguments when appropriate.